So today is my last day here and I have been looking for a certain set of pictures for a whole week and I couldn't find them in any of my parents' photo albums. And then I just found a little album in my parents' room. I found this. So I'm going to show you guys how different this looks now. Like this is crazy. So this used to be my parents' garden and this is it now. I'm just so proud of my parents for what they've done here. I mean, this is 1997, you know, how far they've come, like my dad doing his woodwork and fixing the house and stuff like that. And it's just amazing. And obviously I got very nostalgic looking at the album because there's just all kinds of stuff in there. There's like my parents' engagement and like somewhere is along the way I will be born as well but this is an album that I've just never even really looked at so oh my gosh I'm so excited and I'm gonna just do a little fun before after of the house because my parents worked on this house for a long time they bought it 25 years ago and they have completely redone it and they did it about 10 years ago but yeah I'm so impressed anyway oh praise the lord that that just happened because I was looking for this picture for a week <laughs> I always think like what would life be if I'd stayed here and I always contemplate whether I should move back which I'm not gonna do obviously unless God really just tells me yes you need to move back to St Albans but like honestly I love my life in Berlin but every single time I'm here recently because I've just been like growing and learning learning and knowing that you know this place is not as bad as it used to be it was just the people I was surrounded by when I was a teenager and I just had other problems going on it wasn't the town it was the people around me like you know now that that is all better I'm like why can't it you know be closer to Berlin or why can't I don't know why yeah why can't I go back and forth all the time and maybe one day I will that was like always my dream you know that I get to go back and forth between the two places um, but yeah it's been really nice being back here this time I'm off to go and have lunch with Annie now and then basically go home and you know sometimes it can be really overwhelming going back to a place when you feel like you have to go and see everybody you have to go and do everything and this time it wasn't like that I felt like I had to but I actually wanted to I wanted to see all these old friends and this time around like it was just, there was so many moments of really good timing. So there was like spontaneous meetups with friends of my parents that I haven't seen in 10 years or, you know, five years. Like yesterday, we also saw some people who, where the last time I saw the kids, I babysat them and they were like children, like small children. And now they're teenagers and almost finishing school and all this different stuff. And it's just like super crazy how time flies. But it was just, I feel like every single person that I saw it was like sort of a full circle moment this time it was a lot of meeting up with people I haven't seen in literally 10 years or five years and it was just so good for my soul and I am really tired like and this was my holiday like I haven't I'm not going on like a beach holiday or anything this year and so I'm really tired but like I don't mind because actually rest is not always like chilling at a pool rest is often also like doing something that's really good for your soul and it really was so yeah and it's been really nice just to be a little bit more in nature as well because Berlin has parks and Berlin is nice but this is just slightly more countrysidey than Berlin because it's not a city well it is a city but it's not like a what's it what's the word a capital city <laughs> so that's been really good like just to be here you know among the trees um and yeah just with <sighs> nature i guess 
and uh, one day I will have a good phone where, or a good camera, a vlogging camera, I pray, because this is just getting really annoying with the light, but look how pretty this is, this is stunning. And you know what? God will put me in the right place at the right time. Maybe I'll come back here for a bit, but we never, ever, ever know where, you know, we're gonna end up. And I've been in Berlin almost six years to like, pretty much to the day. It's like six, five years and 52 weeks. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just so crazy how life moves on and people change and things change. and. Some relationships stay, some friendships stay, and this is my encouragement to you who are watching this, that you should cultivate the friendships that do you good. Cultivate those friendships that are really like, actually doing your soul good. So that's all I wanna say, and from here on out, I'm just gonna go home now, basically back to Berlin, and go back into crazy real life. So it's been real. This is a very intensive, vlog and I have no idea if it's going to be four parts or one part or like a movie <laughs> or a recap but it's been really really good to film everything and show you guys and take you along and so till next time peace I just had a little memory we used to come to this river and like walk across and all I remember is one time there was rats inside and that was not so nice <laughs> oh gosh yeah that's the thing hey so many memories here and we used to spend all our time in this park Let's go, Nando's baby, yeah. So guys, I just wanna share a quick story time about the trip home because it took me 19 hours to get home from London to Berlin. After my lunch with Annie, I basically just said goodbye to my parents and then I went to the station and I had to go all the way to Gatwick Airport and then I was on the train which is like a two hour ride and I knew already that my flight had been delayed but then I got a message saying my flight had been cancelled and I was sitting in the train had no signal and I couldn't really figure out what to do basically yeah the flight had been cancelled I got to the airport so the lady said call EasyJet so I called EasyJet called two different people at EasyJet and they both couldn't help me and so I spent about an hour on my laptop trying to figure out where I could get a flight and there were obviously no connecting flights. Now, the problem was that I hadn't booked another day of holiday. So I had to be back at work at my job the next day, technically at 9 a.m. And my flight was originally at 7.30 p.m. So it was all very tight anyway, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. It was all very tight. And yeah, so I ended up looking for a flight on lastminute.com. I found one, it was via Dublin. There was loads of stress before this as well. So like, this was like the last shot, but it was it was via Dublin and it cost me like 235 euros. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna book it because I need to get back to Berlin. Um, and then I went to the Aer Lingus desk. It was an overnight flight as well, right? So the next day I would, no, yeah, it was something like that. It was like overnight. I can't even remember, it was like two months ago, but it was such a crazy experience. 
Um, I went to Aer Lingus to the desk. I said, I can't check in online for some reason. I don't know what's going on. And then the lady was like, yeah, um, you've been sold a cancelled flight. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? I've been sold a cancelled flight. Who sells someone a cancelled flight on, yeah, on a website? Like, I just didn't get it. I didn't get it. I was so angry. And then her colleague next to her was like, yeah, this is also not the first one that's happened today. And I was like, are you serious? This is ridiculous. Like, how can you, how can you sell a person a cancelled flight? Anyway, I was so mad. And then she said, um, she can put me onto another BA flight and basically change the flight number and get me to Dublin. Um, that was only because this flight was delayed by four hours. So other people was, were super late, but I was able to get on this flight. So that was that. I ended up in Dublin. It was like 10, 30 PM. And I was like so freaking tired that I was like, you know what, I'm gonna get a hotel because EasyJet's gonna pay for it anyway. And then the only hotel that I could find was the Radisson Blue. I really, I really, why did I do this? Like, I shouldn't have done this. Anyway, I, like, I, there are many things that I would have done very, very differently this time, next time. I hope there's no next time. I'm just like, why did I do this? Anyway, so, <laughs> I went, to, oh, I went to the Radisson Blue, spent 235 euros on a hotel room, and bearing in mind the next flight, the connecting flight from Dublin to Berlin, was at five, 6 a.m. So I was like, okay, um, I don't have to, you know, I, I can sleep, I can sleep a little bit. I'll get a couple hours sleep. Um, it was really nice. I could have a nice shower in the hotel and I did sleep quite well, but I didn't sleep amazing because I kept waking up, but I did sleep well, like it was comfortable. The hotel was really, really, really nice. But the only problem was that I completely like, my brain just stopped functioning because I thought, oh yeah, um, I can get to the airport at 5.40 and then catch the flight at six. Like my head just didn't, it just stopped working. Like I just started thinking about it as like when you catch a train, you know, and <laughs> it's not the same thing. You always have to be early at an airport because you've got to go through security. You've got to have at least an hour. And so by the time I got to the airport, I wanted to check in and I was like, oh my God, can I check in? In her lovely Irish accent, the lady was like, gates closed. And I was like, Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> True. Oh my gosh. I'm such an idiot. Um, what? <laughs> Why did I do this? She went, yeah, honey, the gate is closed. Like, the flight's in 20 minutes. And I just completely didn't think about it. Um, so I completely wasted that time at the hotel, basically. I could have just stayed in the airport. Anyway. Don't know why I did that. Then, um, <laughs> sometimes we make decisions that we have no idea why we did them. So then I had to run to the help desk and I said, guys, I need to get on a flight to Berlin tonight because I have to go work the next day. And then also I had a wedding that I had to go to the day after and it was just all completely crazy. Um, and I, I had to be back in Berlin. Like there was no leeway, there was no gap. I had to be back in Berlin. And um, then they were like, yeah, if you run to terminal one, Ryanair might have a flight for you they might. He was like, if they haven't sold out, they might have a flight for you and it would be in an hour. And I was like, okay, fine. So I dashed to terminal one. I had to like run with my suitcase and I was so warm. Oh my goodness. And this is like, I hadn't had any food since Nando's. Like I had only had, I think I'd only had a sandwich that I happened to pack with me for my dinner. And that was also kind of breakfast. And I was so hungry and I was so tired and I hadn't had any coffee and it was, I had a coffee at the hotel while I was waiting for the shuttle bus, which was nice, but like I was so running on zero. And then I ran to terminal one and I said, guys, I need a, I need a flight to Berlin. And he's like, yeah, that's fine. Like just, it's 147 euros. And I was like, go do it. I don't care, do it. But then I had to end up using my um, business account because I couldn't access my other credit card and my credit card number. And it was like a whole thing. <laughs> Oh, it was so annoying. And um, yeah, at the end of the day, I didn't get that money back because obviously it was my own fault for missing my flight. So couldn't get compensation on that part, but I managed to get on the flight to Berlin with Ryanair and I was just so tired. Like I got a bacon sandwich for four euros in Dublin airport for breakfast. And I was like, what the heck, why is this so expensive? <laughs> Um, found some water as well and then got on that flight and then we ended up sitting on the tarmac for an hour. So we ended up getting to Berlin 
at 11.30 a.m. when I was supposed to be in Berlin at 10 p.m. the day before. <laughs> and I got here, Joshua, my boyfriend, he picked me up from the airport, got me a coffee and a sandwich, and I was just so tired and so done with everything. That was basically the story of how I managed to get home from London. And it took 19 hours. It's kind of put me off a little bit from flying again for a little while because it's just so annoying. Like, I don't know, I feel like there's so few flights these days that you can't just go, oh, there's another flight, let me get that one. Like there was none of that. There was only layovers and it was ridiculous. Like it was either like go to Norway or go to Dublin and the Norway flight was really expensive as well. And then there was one flight that I found, I even went to the BA desk, I went to British Airways and I was like, is there a flight? And then I checked and it would have been perfect because it was in an hour and it would have cost me 900 euros. But at that time I was like, I don't care. But then it was the wrong airport. So that's the story of how I spent 600 euros and took 19 hours to get home. So that is why I have no footage from, pretty much no footage from that time because like I stopped vlogging after Nando's basically and I was like, oh my goodness, this was just crazy. Thanks guys for watching this video. Thank you for watching all the parts to this um, trip to England. It was a really, really nice time seeing my parents, being in my hometown, seeing my grandparents, seeing my old friends. And like I said, it was just such a full circle moment for many reasons. And I had some really gorgeous times. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching this vlog. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for listening to the story time. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe.